Right. Yeah, thanks uh, everyone for joining this session. Um, so today I'll run, I'll run you through um, the key takeaways from the information architecture and navigation audits. So if you want to go through the presentation later, I recommend you reading the full report. Uh, it's not mandatory, but there are all the details in there. So as you may know, uh, the P14 did a lot of research last year, almost a year after uh, the end of the implementation phase. So it was time to identify who our audience is, to assess how um, they use the websites, to understand their, need, their needs and expectations, as well as meeting internal needs. So for that, uh, we conducted quantitative research to analyze audience, users' behavior, and acquisition. And also how users navigate and how they use take action pages. We launched like global surveys on P4 sites um, to understand user goals and, and if they encounter barriers um, using the sites. And by the way, um, the data studio dashboards are ready for each and row to be checked. So we'll send you the link um, in a follow-up email after this call. And we also conducted qualitative research first by running like a usability test to assess how users navigate and find information on the sites. And we also interviewed um, P4 stakeholders and users, some of you, uh, to identify um, their needs and also pain points. And we finished with digital campaigners and engagement specialist interviews so to understand that their vision and how this can fit into P4. So we are here today to present through like the, the key findings and key takeaways. So let's start with a quick overview of uh, who P4 users are. So we can see that global users uh, location match the websites which are receiving most of P4 traffic. So Asia, Americas and Europe, uh, but we are hardly reaching audiences in Africa and Oceania. We know that most of uh, P4 users have between 25 to 44 years old, and they are visiting P4 for the first time. And females are the largest group from the P4 global audience. Also 60% of them use mobile devices and 35% on desktop. Usually, uh, users reach before via organic search and social media. And it's also worth mentioning that uh, users coming from social media are usually on mobile when visiting before. So now that we know who our, who our audience is, uh, let's see what they would like to achieve on before. So based on the global survey results uh, when listening on, on P4 websites, most of the respondents are mostly from Gen Z and they are first time visitors. Um, half of, the, of these respondents say that their primary goals are to learn and consume information on the website, following by ways to get involved. Also 17% of the users will reply to others uh, in, the, in the, um, the first question, say that consuming content remains as a primary goal, but they're also looking for opportunities to take action and get involved. Then if we take a closer look at what users exactly search on P4 sites, we stop search keywords. Uh, we can see that these keywords match users' goals when it comes to look for specific information. For instance, we have electricity, plastic, soybean, palm, etc. So now that we know what users' goals are, uh, let's see what do they actually do when they visit P4 sites. So based on Google Analytics, uh, we have identified two main user journeys. So the first one is uh, Gen Z and Gen Y users coming from organic search on desktop. And the majority of them land on posts, take action pages, or the home page. And these pages are also the most visited ones. And when starting their journey on post pages, users spend about a minute reading the page, then 76% of them leave the site. 
also users um, who started their session at take action pages have high exit rates with a low session duration. But on the other hand, uh, those who landed on the on the home page do convert. They spend like more time on more, more time on the page, um, and they visit at least three more pages in their journey, such as act, explore, or take action pages, which means that they are more likely to discover content when they start their journey from this page. The second journey identified is with users above 24 years old, coming from social media and ads on mobile devices, also landing on the most visited page um, with kind of a similar pattern as observed in the first journey, but they actually spend less time on pages uh, with higher exit rates. So the main problems for these two journeys are high exit rates, so why do users leave the sites? Um, so for instance, when users come from external sources, uh, labels used in search results, links, or ads might not accurately describe the page they lead to. Also too many paths as per on take action pages would create indecision and too fewer paths as per on post and campaign pages can create dead ends. Uh, another problem identified is that we have poor traffic on lots of pages, such as Act, Explore, Issues, Tags, Campaigns, and Evergreen pages. Um, evergreen and issue pages are not easy to access, not to mention campaign pages that have a separate experience from the before site. So these pages basically are too hidden in the information architecture. However, Act Explore and Tag Pages are part of the navigation and accessible on So for these specific pages, um, the low traffic may be due to navigation issues. Speaking of navigation, um, in unfamiliar physical spaces, we have ways of orienting ourselves, right? So people rely on signs to move around and make cognitive decisions. Signage codes are learned and memorized. Well, online users also look for signs that will help them getting closer to the information they seek. Um, so let's see now how P4 users use the navigation system. So one of the main problems identified is the low use of the navigation bar. 13.5% 13, 13 of the sessions are interacting with the navigation bar on desktop which is like 100% more than the mobile rates, probably due to like the hidden navigation on mobile. So users barely click on the navigation bar when visiting post and take action pages specifically. So this might be due to unclear labels again. Um, so when labels of the link match what people are looking for, they are more likely to click on them. Um, for instance, we know that the explore entry point can be confusing sometimes. Some users don't understand the difference between acts and explore. Also, also staff members say that we should make the navigation links more explicit um, and more entry points are also missing, especially for campaigns. And they also say that some, some end users feel that a lot of information is missing from the primary menu. So a huge portion of the existing content is actually hidden. There is also um, a higher use of the search on post pages rather than the, the, the navigation menu items. Uh, usually people rely on navigation menus first because it's easier and faster to click on links than use the search. So this could indicate that users couldn't find what they were looking for in the page and in the information architecture. However, um, the search has similar use as Act and Explore on all the pages. So it's really specific to this problem is, is really specific to post pages. Um, another important problem is that users don't interact with tags. Only 0.3% of the sessions are interacting with the navigation tags. Um, users mostly interact with them from the tags pages and tags are mostly clicked in page headers and articles block. 
but the click-through rate uh, remains really like below 0.1 percent so some users might not really identify tags as a navigational element especially on mobile where they are very small and also internal p4 users uh, interviewed say that tags even confuse editors sometimes and they sometimes don't know how to use them in the taxonomy so we know who P4 users are, what they want, and how they navigate. And now let's see if they can actually find what they are looking for on the site. So from the, the global surveys, um, users said that two thirds of, of the global survey respondents said that they were able to find what they were looking for on post and take action pages. The same question asked on the home page, act, explore, issues, tags, and search pages had lower success rates, but still more than half of respondents replied yes, which is good, quite a good thing. But for users who, who didn't succeed in finding what they were looking for, uh, the main issues were not finding the right content. And this they like specifically mentioned in the open question, the lack of specific content information Users are also looking for ways to get involved and to find more information about Greenpeace in general. So to understand why some users still struggle to find content, let's take a deeper look at the website structure. So we can see that between different existing site structures, P4 is built with a web linked site structure. Uh, also, the goal of this structure is to facilitate access to topics based on users' initiative. This kind of structure can also bring confusion. Why? So web link structures are often the most difficult for users to understand and credit. Uh, they work best for small sites or experienced users, but not for first-time visitors who want like a basic understanding of a topic. So this kind of structure is also confusing because most of the time uh, users don't really know where they are on the website. So we have also identified that the taxonomy is unclear. Users don't understand the system between tags and categories and editors are also confused about how to use it to organize content throughout the site. There is also a confusing export page uh, the way the taxonomy is presented on the page is confusing for users, uh, probably due to the split two columns block that shows one category associated with one tag. So for mobile screens, uh, only the, the categories are shown and users cannot have access to all tags at once from this page. Also categories and tags pages are barely visited. So less than 2% of the planet for session visit these pages. And lastly, staff member and hand users also said that key content is missing on the website or to hidden. For instance, victories, values, or background stories are to hidden. Uh, the about us section is not visible enough. People are interested in reading more about this, but it's not easy to access. So now that we have identified why users couldn't find specific information, uh, let's see how the current information architecture help them take action. So we know from the global surveys that the actions that showed most interest of our users were changing habits to live a more sustainable life and signing petitions to support the cause. Also, users often visit our sites looking for a trustful source of information. Uh, they will later use it for schoolwork, research, and to get informed and raise awareness among, the, among their networks. So now let's see how we currently address engagement opportunities on P4. All of you know that Take Action pages are the main pages on Planet 4 that drive users to take action through a series of tests. But the main problems are that these pages have a low conversion rate. They get most of their visitors from organic search, 
but they generate like a low conversion rate on acquisition, probably because of too many steps uh, before performing an action. Also, sometimes we present maybe too many asks on, the, on these pages, and that can create indecision about which primary action to perform. Then the survey showed that users want to act, for instance, change habits, join local groups, et cetera, join events. But this kind of content is barely presented on the take action pages. Then we have petition pages. So petitions, as you know, are part of Greenpeace campaign's DNA. Um, they are like easiest and quickest way to engage people because it's a one-time action and doesn't require a lot of involvement. But the truth is that petitions are often dead ends. They generate a high lead generation conversion rate, but they also have high exit rates, about 72%, since they are mostly dead ends without any other actions to perform. Also, these pages are mostly separate from the site experience because they are not built directly on P4. Sometimes they are built in engaging networks, sometimes with other tools. So they open in a new tab and cannot be found in the information architecture. Um, and we have the campaign pages. Campaign pages also provide engagement opportunities, but also have a separate experience and navigation from P4 sites. So again, they cannot be found in the information architecture. Not to mention campaign microsites, which to a separate experience have their own domain, their own visual identity, and in most cases, a separate database. So this generates like 0% real engagement of anyone who performed an action on the microsite. Also, staff members say that campaign pages shouldn't be separate from the rest of the P4 sites. Campaigners actually struggle to put information on the website for campaigns. They also say that a space for program and campaigns content that serves different audiences is currently missing on the websites. There is no space on P4 to inform people about environmental issues, even if there are no projects running at the moment. Uh, yeah, so now um, we know like, what the main problems are. Um, so now how, how might we better help uh, those users achieve their goals? So well, first uh, we should improve like friendability uh, by redefining a little bit the website structure, which will be easier to use and to find content for first time visitors and experienced users. And for that, we also have to improve the sitemap. This is something that uh, came up a lot from the interviews, for instance. So P4 editors can better organize their content and it will be easier for end users to understand the site stru structure. Then we should redefine the taxonomy system so it's both accurately employed by content editors and clearly understood by, by end users, as well as making the taxonomy more visible uh, in the sites. So we should also improve the navigation system uh, by providing a clearer navigation menu with clearer labels that meet users' goals, uh, and maybe a better way to get an overview of the site. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we have to go to build like a hier hierarchical uh, website structure with a lot of menus as we had uh, in P3, for instance. And most importantly, uh, make the navigation more visible on mobile as users are mostly on mobile devices. P4 users, I mean. Um, we could also integrate more web navigation standards with a better way to see where users are on the website with clearer paths. And then we should redefine the navigation tags so it's easy to use by editors and easy to interact with for end users. So thirdly, we should improve the content organization through as seen previously with a new structure and a clearer taxonomy, but also by adding more content like more key content such as learning more about Greenpeace, ways to get involved, background information, victories, etc. Then we should also bring more visual elements to the content so it's easier to digest, consume, and understand. And last but not least, uh, we should provide more opportunities to take action by including campaigns in the P4 experience 
so they can be found in the information architecture. Take action and petition pages should be also rethought a little bit to better fit the new structure with well-defined uh, user journeys and also provide more actions uh, that meet users' goals, such as tips to change habits, join local groups, events, educational material, and so on and so forth. Then we should also think of how we integrate program content so users can better understand campaigns as well, uh, as well as the bigger vision and the organization's goals in order for users to take action. And finally, we should include better supporter journeys across platforms and channels to increase retention so users can spend more time on the sites and do more than a one-time action actually to either like continue their journey and revisit the website later. Um, so from now on, what, what are the next steps? Well, we just fin finished like the understanding phase so we are now starting the second phase, uh, which is redefining the information architecture. So today we are going, as Luca mentioned, uh, a card sorting activity to see our internal staff group and organize content. And we are also planning to run uh, the same card sorting exercise with end users so we can compare uh, like mental models. And from there, we'll follow like a tree test with end users to test the content and the navigation. Then in stage three, uh, all the test results will be will help us uh, define wireframes and prototypes to be shared with you and test it again with end users. And we'll finish with the implementation phase. So the process is a bit long, but uh, yeah, we'd like to speed up a little bit so we can implement everything this year. So that's all folks. Uh,